So this week is in the trio is one of the most um, kind of commonly used notes in all perfumery. That's bergamot. Um, I believe it's an inedible fruit. Kind of sits between lemon and lime. To be honest, in fragrance, I tend to find it maybe more limey. That's all subjective in it. Um, it's also the thing that gives Earl Grey its kind of flavour. So it is, it's a note I particularly enjoy and a flavour I, I do love. Um, I suspect it's not for everyone, but the fact it's in every fragrance doesn't mean particularly you can smell it, does it? It's just, it's there. Um, I like jasmine and patchouli, it's kind of a, a staple note now. How in earth am I going to get past here? Uh, so yeah, um, it's it's one of them that we all know. And to be honest with you, I'm one of these people who um, can't really pick out the citruses. So I'll just tend to say, you know, the citrus in this rather than bergamot because I just don't know. And um, you know, some people can't smell the difference between lemon and orange. So it's it's just one of them things. Them deficiencies we're stuck with, isn't it? So yeah, we'll get into it. So first up for um, Indy, it's, it's, uh, maybe you think it's a weird choice, but with, with bergamot, I can pick literally any fragrance I wanted, because it's likely to have bergamot in it, isn't it? But I picked Hush Hush from 4162 Tuesdays and Smurfy Girly, because um, it's predominantly not about the bergamot, obviously. But in the opening, it serves a really good kind of thing. We're talking about the EDT here, that I absolutely, utterly adore. Um, the, the fragrance itself is kind of to remind you of a, like an old sweet shot we'd have in our youth, mixed with kind of the concept of of them flapper girls with the violets and the and the kind of um, dried cigarette smoke from from the candy chocolate cigarettes and stuff. However, we're talking about the bergamot. The bergamot is in the opening, and I don't know what it mixes with, whether there's honey or something like that, but it gives this. To people who aren't in the UK, I don't know how to explain this to it. Like a throat lozenger called a, a um, I just had it on the le le something. I see. I talk too much because I've forgotten what it's called. If it comes up, it comes up. By the way, this throat lozenge thing um, that had this kind of honeyed lemon kind of dark thing, and it they were really really nice. Are really really distinctive they're quite addictive actually as well because as you suck them there's this like goopy stuff i suppose it was supposed to be the medicine in the middle that came out and it had that kind of um bergamotty if you like feeling with 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 the honey so yeah um, back to this because damn wind but it kind of has that nostalgic kind of feel about it taking it back to childhood and i really really enjoy that that kind of semi-sweet med candied medicinal touch to this fragrance so yeah that's a uh, hush hush from 4160 tuesdays and smurfy so for the niche is um from kajal and um it's from a fragrance called almaz um and and almaz to me basically in in a nutshell smells of like fruit salad salad sweets um, again, I don't know if you get them abroad, but here they kind of like a, well, clues in the name, innit? Candied fruit salad, like a little bit creamy um, and a little bit, a little bit on the kind of fruity side and that. And um, so the, what the bergamot does in that, it adds, excuse me, the juicy citrus feel through it, which kind of goes through it. Now this is, don't get me wrong, this is not a candied fragrance. It is also not like that horrific herbapura that is hyped to all God knows what. I wonder how many free bottles of that went out. But it is definitely not like that. Um, it's got more of a kind of smooth, grown-up feel about it. There's a lot of woods. Um, smooth, nice woods. I think there's going to be sandalwood and cedar in the base. And there's, um, there's a nice muskiness in there. And even sometimes it has a little bit of a kind of rich, fruity, boozy kind of thing going through it. But it, to me, again, like I say, it smells of fruit salad. And the bergamot gives more of that, you know, that candied sweetness in there. Um, like, you know, bergamot kind of can, can't it? 
it's um it's quite hard to explain without without <laughs> making it sound like sweets but it doesn't it's yeah it's a very lovely one not not going to waffle on again not the most complicated fragrance in the world but very lovely indeed so that's almaz from kajal and finally for the designer it's not to get everyone just calm down it's not controversial and it is a designer brand because it makes candles and and other stuff as well as a uh, perfume and that's fragrance ones um office for men um from jeremy fragrance again chill it's not about the person it's about the fragrance in it at the end of the day who cares who makes it really i mean i'm not going to go on on one in this because probably get myself sued but um Let's just say Estee Lauder are promoting the fragrance of someone who has been convicted of some pretty damn disgusting offences. So let's not go into, you know, talking about the person. But yeah, fragrance one, um, it is, it's, basically it's a mixture of Sauvage and um, uh, Aventus with a bit of um, Bleu de Chanel chucked in the most famous popular fragrances at the time i think it's i think it's clever for that i i don't think it's a you know it's hidden that that's basically what it is and that um but obviously bergamot is a big massive part of it um especially in the opening of um aventus isn't it really um and it opens juicy citrusy and then you kind of get the um the patchouli and all of that coming through it um, and the, uh, quite a bit of ambroxan. Again, it's used. It's it's actually used quite. It's not obnoxious headache ambroxan. I don't know what it's got to do with an office, but be that as it may, it's um, it's a lovely fragrance. And the bergamot, like I say, is just a nice citrusy part of it. Bright, um, juicy. Every everyone likes the smell of it, don't they? Um, so again, I, I, I cannot knock the fragrance. I'm sorry. But it's, um, it does what it's supposed to do. It's vastly overpriced. But it's all right. And, and I have a bottle of it, don't I? So, you know. So that's Office for Men from Fragrance One. So, yeah, it's a bit of a cheap video, this, isn't it? When you pick a note that's in every single fragrance ever made. Um, <laughs> it is what it is, isn't it? Um, it's a, you know. Um, <sighs> It's an enjoyable note. Again, I think it's one of them universal notes that we all kind of enjoy and, uh, and like, isn't it? So, yeah, um, bergamot. I mean, what more is there to say about it? don't really think it comes in different styles. It's citrusy, limey, lemony, isn't it? And maybe a bit orangey at times. And it's what it is. So what's your favourite scent with bergamot? I mean, is there a kind of dominant bergamot one i have that um oh what's it called the people who make taroni i have that is it called burger bergamusk bergamast whatever it is from them um which i'm looking forward to try because they are insane fragrances um maybe i should have tried it but it, it's not anyway so yeah what's your favorite um you know, um, citrus note. What's your favourite bergamot fragrance? I know you're a big fan of Earl Grey tea. Uh, like my one of my heroes, Mr. Jean-Luc Picard. All right, folks. Thanks. Bye.